Okay, hello everyone, this is Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and today we're going over a guide for Inosuke Hashiraba Entertainment District style. Entertainment Inosuke is objectively one of the most fun characters in the game to play, so I highly recommend you at least try picking up him up and playing him, because he's an absolute blast. He's kind of probably one of the most powerful rushdown characters in the game, and one of the most unga bunga rushdown characters in the game. He's got a very gorilla brain dead move for basically anything you could want. If you want to get in from a distance, he's got an armored charge in that starts combos, and as long as you have a support, you can just completely cover yourself and just safely get in on the opponent and get whatever kind of safe combos you want and get a hard knockdown from it so you get to build back the meter and then you're in on your opponent and you get to go for your crazy mix-ups and if the opponent is getting hit you can go for some ridiculous resets into grabs or into other things that are practically impossible to avoid unless they know the specific ways of getting out of them and then we will get to that and he's also just got this completely unique thing as his guard special which is just this unblockable attack which has slow start up but is completely unblockable and is very very safe even if he whiffs if the opponent jumps out of the way he recovers practically instantly so it's hard to punish so this is the crazy character let's get straight into it his regular attack strings are obviously the same as regular Rinosuke's they've just got some new particle effects um nothing too much to mention here there's nothing too crazy about Inosuke's attack strings. One, probably the one bad thing is his down attack string is kind of slow. The two slow hits that he does changing sides kind of means that he'll never get the hard knockdown from it if you're using it at the end of the combo just because it takes so much time. Um, yeah, it takes like half of the combo counter just to do that string so it's uh, not really that good in my opinion and I don't use it that often. The up combo can be useful if you want to do like super cheap combos you can do stuff like this. So it can be actually quite useful if you want to use your up combo in combos, which is just something to note for because up combos are not really used for that much, but Inosuke can actually combo out of it really, really well. Um, his armor attacks and stuff are, I believe, the same. I don't know if they changed the frame data or anything for them, but um, his armor attack still feels as good as always. It travels a decent f distance forwards. Wow, yeah, it's a really decent distance forwards. And... Um, yeah, it's just it's just an armor attack. It takes quite a while to charge up to full charge, but not a ridiculously long time. Probably just a little bit above average. And you can go for his resets off of it, and it'll do a lot of freaking damage. And off of his air tilt attack, he actually has like a, a pretty decent aerial tilt attack. It doesn't have the best um, hitbox, but at least it's not too minus and he can always combo off of it, which is not something characters like Entertainment Tanjiro have the privilege of always being able to say. His grab is really, really good. It's so fast. It comes out even before the animation is really finished. So see when the fist comes all the way up there? Nah, it's hitting the opponent before the fist even comes all the way up. It's crazy fast, and that leads to what is ridiculous about most of his resets. This situation, practically unavoidable. And what's even crazier, this situation, practically unavoidable. <laughs> it's a fast grab, and it leads to some ridiculous things. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we get specifically to it, to his mix-ups. But um, it's a good grab. It's a good grab. It doesn't have the best range, but as long as you're close to your opponent, it's a, it's a big threat. Unfortunately, having the short range does make it kind of distant, uh, difficult to do like a charge up grab. You have to be time it pretty well, which is hard to do in a laggy connection, but it is possible. And it leaves you nice and close to the opponent, so you can go for your Oki and keep on top of them. As he likes to do. Okay, and um, yeah, movement-wise, same as regular Inosuke, I believe. Average walk speed, average dashes, and average dash in. Maybe a slightly slow dash in, actually, it seems. Like it comes up, he runs pretty slowly, which is interesting to note but it's not really something you notice when you're actually playing. Okay, now for his special moves. This is where he gets particularly fun. His standing special, special one, Slice and Dice. Does a nice big chunk of damage, so if you land this raw, it's a massive damage weight to start your combo. And it's it's just, it does everything. I don't understand the special move. It does everything you could want. It's It starts combos, it's plus on block, it's very cancelable, so it's very safe, but that's obvious because it's plus on block already. Um, you can use it to continue combos as well. 
it's useful in the air as his main combo extender, which is ridiculously good as a combo extender because it does so much damage and lets him dash up afterwards. <laughs> and it is so plus that he can go in for practically guaranteed grabs or cancel it into his unblockable. And he also uses it um, as the main component of his resets if the opponent is trying to mash on him. So if he does full combo and he ends the combo in slice and dice, he can go into slice and dice again, and if the opponent was trying to mash buttons at all, it's going to completely reset them, and they're probably going to be dead, honestly. That's just who this character is. So, I, I just said a lot of things about this special move, but it, it, it just does a lot. So, obviously, it's plus on block, so you can use it to extend your pressure. And he lunges a little bit forward while he does it, so it can catch some pushbacks and stuff. So it's just really, really good for pressure, and it breaks the opponent's guard pretty quickly. Um, yeah, so that's very good. Plus on block, it can be used as a combo starter or an extender. So anytime you land it, you can just go into regular attacks super, super easily. There's no timing or like, yeah, anything strict about it at all. It just works. And it's cancelable, so you can cancel it into your other special moves or into a dash in if you want to. Or actually, you can't cancel it into a dash in, only into your other special moves. So if your opponent like does block it, you're very plus here. You can even cancel into your Palisade Bite, which is your unblockable. Or if you do for some reason, you can want chase them down with your armor attack if you want to chase down a pushback or something. And by that point, their guard is basically already broken. And it is also one of the main constituents of his combos, particularly when the opponent is airborne. I don't know if I can get this guy to jump in the air, but if the opponent is airborne at all, whew, if you happen to catch them, oh yeah, like so something that happens often if I they get hit by a Zenitsu, look at this. Oh, if I did one more rep, that's over 5,000 damage and it cost me like no meter at all. That had cost me two bars, and it was already like over half of the opponent's life bar. It is ridiculous how good he is at um, extending aerial combos with this. It's, it's so, so ridiculous. And it's just because it brings him to the ground really quickly, and he's just able to get a free dash in afterwards. So he gets super cheap, super damaging combos, because it does a lot of damage on its own. He gets to dash up, do the aerial attack string, which is already known to do a lot of damage. It's just ridiculous. Like, that cost me two bars for, like, the opponent's half of their life bar, just because Zenitsu happens to hit them. Which is something that happens, you know, a lot. And, um, so if you're wanting to go for damaging routes, they're usually going to be, like, launch the opponent into the air, get them into the air, do this loop in the air again and then get another hard knockdown, and even though it gets a bunch of meter, you know, you can easily get hard knockdowns because you're keeping on going into the air so you can build back most of the meter. It's just ridiculous, and it's really satisfying in a match when you see that you've happened to hit the opponent airborne, and maybe they've tried to jump, like, while you were doing things. And you just get to... Uh, it's so good. It is so much damage, and uh, we love to see it. And, uh, yeah. I think that's about all I can, t all there is to skide about this move. It is crazy, crazy powerful, and you can even use it kind of like as a dive kick because it moves him so far forwards. I use it in any position that I would use a dive kick because his dive kick, you know, range isn't that great. His oh, wrong special move. Slice and dice. You get to combo off of it. It starts a yellow combo. It's plus on block. It. Is it, it you can combo off of it. It has better range. It's plus on block. It's everything better. It's. So good, and it has a huge hitbox. It's, you know, obviously you have to be at the right heights. It's just so, so freaking good, bro. You can just press this whenever you want. If you're like, oh, I think I should be starting offense now, boom. Slice and dice is going to be your option. It's just so good. So, so crazy good. And I think we need to start moving on or else I'm going to be talking about this special move for a whole hour. His tilt special, or his special two, is Slice. <clears throat> and basically... This is kind of like regular Inosuke's guard special, where he's armored and dashes at the opponent. But this one, he actually gets a combo off of. It starts a red combo, and what I usually like to do it is like kind of this situation into a hard knockdown. It's a nice chunk of damage, gets a hard knockdown, and you get to build all of your meter back before the opponent gets to wake up. 
so very very good and it's a decent chunk of damage as well. And this move is basically just a really really good way of getting in on the opponent. It is definitely punishable, I do have to note that, which is why I just often cover myself up with a support and I just will, you know, have my Zenitsu out to cover me. So if I do it, and because it's multi-hitting, you can actually react and see if it hits the opponent, like if they're blocking. So you're like, oh yeah, they're definitely blocking, I can press Zenitsu there and then go in for my pressure. And at that, at that point, their guard is almost already broken, so they have to be very, very careful of how they're reacting if they block this. <clears throat> and what's good, you might be wondering, like, what's the difference with just... If you're just gonna, you know, cover yourself with the support anyways, why wouldn't you just dash in like a normal person? Well, it's an armored approach. So if the opponent is doing anything <clears throat> that would beat my regular dash in, like maybe projectiles or just some kind of attacks with a lot of priority, like stupid water wheels or other neutral defying things like Tengen, water wheels, you know, those kind of things and projectiles that go in front of them, you're armored. So you get the approach in for free. So you get on top of the opponent guaranteed for free because of the armor, and then you get to keep it safe using your support. So that's what makes it even more powerful than other things. It's really, really good. And it just goes so, so damn far. Like, he just, just keeps running. You keep thinking he'll stop, and he doesn't. It's really, really, really good. But uh, yeah, make sure if you're throwing it out and the opponent does block it, that you have a support to cover yourself up, because you're, you're hella punishable. There's no way that people don't punish this. Okay, um, that's about all there is to say for this special move, but um, once again, it can actually also be really, really good in the air, because it is also armored, so it's kind of just like a s extra souped up version of your dive kick. So, Inosuke's dive kick, kind of trash. Now we have two other options for dive kicks. He can either go for his slice and dice, which is his like, plus on block, combo starting, yellow combo starting, awesome big hitbox way of getting in, or he's got an armored dive kick that starts combos. There's a red combo, but it's freaking armored. So he, if he's in the air, he can be like, ooh, get back to the ground with some armor. And uh, it's, it's just good. And he can also use it when he's, um, like in these situations where he's got the opponent in the air. He can use it to get a hard knockdown and does a bunch of extra damage at the end of combo, and it is a good hard knockdown. He starts building meter surprisingly quickly and gets to build back a bar or two before the opponent wakes up. So that's just a good way of adding extra damage and getting um, more utility off of the end of your combos. Right, and now for his guard special, it's his Palisade Bite. And this is probably the most gimmicky thing about this character. Uh, people, it's kind of like Hinokami Tanjiro's his guard special, the, the unblockable, whatever it's called. Um, it's reactable if the opponent knows it's coming, but if the opponent is either just like in a bad connection or if they haven't fought against this character before, they're gonna get annihilated by this because you can just do it like any time, whether they're blocking or whether they're getting hit. You could always have an opportunity where you can throw this out. So you can do it after your plus on block special move. So they're like, oh, he's plus on block. He's gonna attack me after this. I should keep blocking. But then you cancel into your Palisade Bite and beat them up. Or you can just use it like at the end of your combos as like a weird combo ender because they think you're just gonna do, you know, a regular person combo ender. But then you end up just going, or not extending your combo and you go into this and you reset into a new combo. Oops, I missed. But yeah, there's a lot of potential but it's definitely very gimmicky. Usually if it's on hit, I can just do it off of regular attacks, but if it's on block, I kind of always do it off of my slice and dice, just because it gives me a little bit more time to go into it. Luckily, it's very safe, so if the opponent is just trying to desperately get away from me and, like, jump away to dodge the unblockable, um, they're not really going to punish me because... Oh, wow, it goes really far, doesn't it? They're not going to punish me because it recovers, like, practically instantly, and I can block very, very quickly. The... Thing to note though is, if the opponent knows it's coming, they can always mash out and just attack you before it actually hits them. And uh, yeah, that's about all there is to say about that. It's a simple gimmick, unblockable. They can armor through it because it's not any kind of armor breaking thing. They can armor, they can mash, they can jump out. It's, a, it's just a little gimmicky unblockable. But it travels surprisingly far. I don't know if there's any merit to that. Maybe if I've, oh, maybe if I've done in situations where I've got my support out. Maybe it just leads to more... 
guaranteed unblockables. I don't need to run up and go for a grab. I can just get an unblockable that I can combo off of. That seems pretty powerful. Be like, oh, you're blocking? Not anymore. Pretty cool stuff. <clears throat> okay. Um, so that is all of his attacks and special moves. In boost state, I don't think his combo ender is anything notable that you'll want to be using at all. It doesn't really lead to... It has a bit of a hard knockdown, but it doesn't really do too much damage. I think you're better off going for your resets and crazy stuff. And in surge mode... Um, obviously, you can just be going slice and dice all over all the time. And that'll do some pretty decent damage. But you also can probably do some interesting aerial combos. But the problem is, you still have the same amount of time in your combos. So you're probably gonna be doing stuff like this, which will do a bunch of damage. No. It's gonna do a lot of damage no matter what you do, but those are just some options you have. And his ultimate is pretty easy to combo off of, because whether the opponent is in the air or on the ground, you can basically do a few hits into your pala- Ooh, okay, maybe not if they're in the air. Maybe <laughs> have to check that one. Does that work? No? Okay. I'm wrong. Be careful about when you throw your ultimate. I, I only really throw it when it's on the ground, so I guess I wouldn't have really tested against that. But um, yeah, if the opponent is too high up, you're gonna have to delay your ultimate. And he's just going to go flailing behind them and probably get punished. But this is the character where I spend such a ridiculous amount of meter for going for my resets and stuff that I don't see myself using ultimates that often because I'm so often boosting just to get all my meter back. Because having meter is, to this character, far more useful than being able to go for an ultimate, in my opinion. Just because he's got such powerful mix-ups, which we are going to talk about now. So, the deal is with this character... And this might be tricky. I'm going to control two controllers at once to show you um, how powerful his mix-ups are. So, um, I'll just, from the top, his mix-ups are obviously, you know, if the opponent is on the ground, you can go into your slice and dice, and you've got a few options after your slice and dice. You can either go into a grab. So if the opponent is just, you know, blocking while you're in a combo, they're going to get grabbed and you get like 50% or over 50% depending on what you do in your combo. Or you can either go from your slice and dice into another slice and dice and that will beat your opponent if they're trying to mash on you or if they're trying to jump out or sidestep or anything. So if they're trying to do anything that beats the grab, basically, they're going to get hit by the second slice and dice, which is what is really, really scary because it kind of makes it a pure 50-50 for the opponent and a 50-50 that's in Inosuke's favor because they really have to completely commit and Inosuke doesn't really have to gamble anything if the opponent happens to write he's either just going to be safe or like yeah he's going to be safe or plus so um am I I'm not controlling Sabitoho yet okay so let me show you I'm guarding with Sabito and as soon as I'm gonna I'm releasing guard with Sabito and as you can see the guard goes down, and I'm now mashing the attacks with Sabito. So as you can see, as soon as he can attack, he's attacking. So I'm going to do this situation, and go into my slice and dice, and then go into a grab. Sabito is mashing the attack button there, and cannot get out. And obviously the same goes for on hit. There's no escaping this grab by doing your attacks. Obviously, an armored attack will also not work because grabs go through armor. So attacking, trying to mash through is not an option at all. And so many people try to go for that, but you cannot. Um, going for a jump can work, but it is very, very tricky to time. So I'm mashing the jump button with Sabito now. So if you jump directly upwards, if you have the timing just right, you can escape it. If you jump sideways or in other directions it won't work because the character will do like a micro step before they jump and then you won't have enough time to jump out of the way of the grab so you have to jump straight upwards which is good because then if you do dodge the grab oops that's the wrong controller so if you jump up you can get um probably a nice punish on the grab and get some kind of combo going this way which is good but uh yeah 
it's hard to get out and that's your only real escape to get out of the grab, which is pretty terrifying. And I think you can escape it on hit as well, or maybe there's, yeah. So if you jump straight up and you have the timing perfect, you can get out of it. But even, even then, if you mess it up slightly, it, yeah. <laughs> it's not gonna work, so you just have to mash on that jump button and pray that you manage to get out of the grab. Now, the grab, you know, isn't too much. It's not like it's Zenitsu's grab where he gets to build back all of his meter from the grab and it doesn't do a crazy amount of damage. It's just unfortunate that you have, like, a guaranteed grab that's unscaled at the end of any combo. Um, what does get scary, though, is if he starts going for... trying to go for his slice and dice resets. Which, if the opponent is trying to mash or trying to jump, the opponent cannot escape. I'm jumping with... Sabuto, and as you can see, it catches him out of his jump, it catches out of sidesteps, it catches out of mashing, it catches out of everything. Um, it even catches out of, I believe... Oops. Okay, wait, I do... <laughs> this. Yeah, as you can see, Sabuto went to go for his Whirlpool there, which is his DP, his invincible attack, isn't invincible a time to beat the slice and dice. So you can do this, it beats armor attacks and DPs. It is ridiculous that this beats, like, basically everything, and the opponent is basically forced to, like, after they get hit by the first one, they have to block. And, you know, obviously, if you block it, it's plus, and you have to deal with a bunch more pressure from there on. So very, very scary. And there's also just the threat of if you are just standing there and blocking, obviously, you're not jumping, and you're gonna get hit by the grab which is guaranteed. Also, if you are just being a little bit too patient and he, he's going for this one and you just are blocking it, um, oops, I didn't mean to go for an armor attack, that's where you can start for good to go for his even more gimmicky stuff and he'll go for things like this and it'll catch you off guard because you're like, I just better, I'm just gonna block. I don't want to get hit by a reset into another whole ass combo because if he does hit you with it, you're gonna freaking die. So if he does hit you with, um, uh, like, something, he's done a full combo, and he resets you with a slice and dice. He can combo off of this very easily. Probably do an up combo there, so you get a little bit more frame advantage, but you, you die so bad if he, um, hits you with this reset, so you might be just thinking, yeah, just take the throw, but if you get two... Too comfortable taking the throw, that's when Inosuke is going to start going for the Palisade Bite and going for the even more gimmicky unblockables. And getting hard knockdowns, getting all of his meter back so we can do it all over again. Now, there are some sneaky ways that are I that I thought for a period of time were kind of answers to all of his things, and that is actually switching characters. This is something that really stumped me for a while when I was playing online, because I'm like, how the hell do I beat this? But I went into training mode. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. If I am um, trying to go for my reset here, and I try to go for this... Kind of, the game kind of glitched there for a second, but the opponent can just hold down the switch button. And then, then Tanjiro just instantly teleports down. I'm not sure why my game keeps jittering when I go for this. Um, but... If you do go for this, basically, the opponent can switch and punish you for it, so it's very, very, very bad. Let me show you one more time here. Because as you're going for the slice and dice, the other character falls down behind you and punishes your slice and dice. And that's pretty terrifying. And also, if you go for an armor attack, it doesn't really work because they fall down behind you. It's pretty scary, so it's like, how the hell do you beat this? Well, the option that beats that is going for the grab that I previously mentioned was practically guaranteed except for the jump. So if you go for this, even on block, I'll show you on block as well, because, you know, block there's less hits done, obviously. So Sabuto is blocking and he's going to switch to Tanjiro. And as you can see, Tanjiro jumped down because he went to switch to Tanjiro, but Tabito wasn't able to jump off of the screen in time to dodge the grab. And then the grab goes into the grab animation, and it keeps Sabito on the screen, even though Tanjiro switched in to be the active player. It's pretty crazy, and it's not something I've seen as something that happens in this game before. But, uh, I think that is so cool. You can snatch them out of the character switch and be like, Nah, Sabito, you are staying here. And it even makes them spend the meter. So if you do this, it makes them spend the meter from the character switch so they can't break their combos next time. Um... 
He tries to switch to Tanjiro. I go to grab, so I beat him trying to punish me. And now, he doesn't have Tanjiro to break the next combo that I hit him with if I hit him right after this. And that means he's probably just gonna, you know, start dying. So, yeah. That is your answer to the opponent if they're trying to do that switch out. Just go for more of your grabs. And even though it's less damage, getting guaranteed grabs is certainly nothing to complain about. And then, you know, after you, you do do this, the opponent isn't going to be bothering to switch out all the time because they're just wasting meter and getting punished for it. So they're losing meter, they're losing health, so they're going to start not doing for that, and then you will have conditioned them to um, not do that, and then they might get hit by these other resets, or at least be more patient just to block and block your madness, which... We all know is where it gets scary. And like even, yeah, like I said, even if they do block the Palisade Bite, I mean block the Slice and Dice, did I mention already, yes I did, that the grab is practically guaranteed after a blocked Slice and Dice? So he can be blocking this Slice and Dice, and if he blocks the next one, this grab is basically guaranteed. He can't switch out in time, he can't mash in time, all he can do is jump directly up to dodge that. So. <laughs> Let me show you how this damage can kind of add up. If this is just going to be like, you know, super simple combo, just a bunch of attacks, slice and dice, super simple combo, bunch of attacks, slice and dice, into a guaranteed grab. So if they're blocking, you're basically always going to get over 50% of the opponent's life if they are respecting you. And it gets even worse if they start disrespecting you, because then your slice and dice will hit them both times, and you just get to go straight back into a combo. You get to go into a combo, not even just go in for a guaranteed grab, go in for a guaranteed combo. It's just, it's ridiculous stuff, and you only need to start going and switching it up and thinking about it a little bit if the opponent is using these advanced tactics like um, switching out characters to fall behind you. And as we mentioned, if you can see that your opponent is going that, because you can see it, because if you look at the top right of the screen, I can see when my opponent is trying to do a little sneaky switch out, because there's that little thing that fills up. I can do that, and I can beat it, and I can make them waste their meter. Now there is one more option, obviously, the opponent, if they have super meter, they can try to ultimate through it. But you know what? There's a bit of irony here, especially I thought this was pretty funny when I found out. But Inosuke can use the opponent's tactic against them and actually switch out. And let me show you what I mean. So if I'm going for my stuff, and I'm trying to do my resets, the opponent can do this. But I can use the opponent's tactic and switch into my teammate and get combos going this way, just like they were against me. And I think that is just beautiful, poetic irony, that the one answer that the opponent has to all of my mix-ups, which is just to throw an ultimate, because if I didn't do this, like, I can't be safe off of either of my options, whether it's a grab or the slice and dice, the ultimate is going to punish me. But because of the time freeze of the ultimate, I can always easily... So I pressed the wrong controller, oops. But you can easily guarantee that, like, react to this. You don't even have to do it as an option select. You can react to it super, super easily. Oops, okay. This is hard to control multiple controllers at once. But, um, yeah. Whether it's a grab or the... the... Oh, yeah, that's right. There's not even enough time for the opponent to go for an ultimate against the grab. Oh, that's why I was messing it up. I'm mashing- oops, I mashed it too early there. But I'm mashing ultimate with Sabito, and the ultimate just doesn't even have enough frames to come out on hit here, which is so ridiculous. And how about on guard? Oh, wait, that's not the grab. Do -do 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 -do. Sorry, I'm kind of labbing in the middle of this guy, but I'm very curious, and I'm sure you are too. Ooh, you can't actually switch out for a character when you go for a grab. So, be a little bit mindful, there's one situation where you can get caught out. But, uh, it's so beautiful, the fact that you can just do this, and if the opponent does go for an ultimate, you just switch your other opponent and punish their ass for trying to punish you. So beautiful. So, yeah. That is the craziness of Inosuke's mix-ups. I didn't even really talk about his combos yet, that was just his mix-ups, but they are so powerful that I had to talk about them for a while. Combo-wise, 
He's pretty simple and pretty crazily free from, just like regular Inosuke. You can just do a bunch of attacks into your slice and dice, a bunch of attacks into your slice and dice. And if you're wanting to keep the opponent grounded, um, I recommend doing that if you're trying to go for any kind of resets. So just do a bunch of attacks into your slice and dices. Or if you're going to go into your Palisade Bites, your opponent has to be grounded as well. And yeah, if you're doing this, it only takes a reset or two to make the opponent completely dead. So it doesn't matter if your combos aren't completely optimal. As long as you're making sure you're thinking about your resets, like is the opponent mashing? Okay, I can do this and reset into a whole new combo. Or if my opponent is just standing there and blocking, well, I can just get a reset into either my Palisade Bite for a completely new combo, or I just have completely guaranteed grabs at the end of whatever combo I'm doing. And I can just do this to make anything I do like 50% of the opponent's life bar. Pretty, pretty damn crazy. And if you are wanting to cash out, well, you certainly can. Um, you can technically cancel after one hit, so if you're getting a punish, I recommend you do kind of combos like this, where you put the opponent into the air really quickly, because then you can do your crazy air cashing out things that we were talking about a little earlier. And as you can see, that damage starts to add up real, real quick. So a practical combo that I'll be landing a lot of the time is a few hits into... Oops. I don't know why it takes this game so long to load. Maybe it's this map with all the people walking around. But a few hits, slice and dice, slice... Slice and dice, dash cancel into the air. Slice and dice, dash cancel. And all of that happens and I can still get a hard knockdown, build back a bunch of my meter before the opponent comes up and then we can get back to being a crazy guy. <coughs> and uh, yeah, it's good damage. And if you do, you know, cancel it as soon as you can, it'll do even more damage because you don't have as many attacks scaling your combo. And this does restand the opponents. If you do want to go to resets this way, you can. But um, the opponent, you know, does have some invincibility when they land on the floor, so I don't really recommend it. But uh, yeah, he can cash out and make it hurt a lot. Especially if he just like lands a roll one of these and he knows he's gonna land it because the opponent's smashing, it's gonna hurt a lot. Like over half of the opponent's life bar if he feels like cashing out. And obviously he can just make it, you know, around 50%, you know, just a little bit under 50% and he gets a hard knockdown to build back basically all the meter he spent. So, he can do a lot of damage. He's a, he's a scary character. And if he wants to go into ultimate, um, well as we saw, it's a little tricky if the opponent is airborne, you have to time it a bit correctly. But if they're on the ground, it's easy as heck. Slice and dice will go into it, guaranteed. <coughs> In fact, if you're doing something... Um, I imagine this will do a bunch of damage. Oh, okay, that doesn't actually combo. Wait, let me, let me try something that will probably do a lot. Oh, no. Maybe if I go... Oh, wait, I know, I know, I know, I know. So, as long as the opponent isn't too high in the air, you can come into your ultimate pretty easily. But, um, like I mentioned before, I, you're basically never going to be comboing into your ultimate because all these resets that you do do cost a decent amount of meter. They're super powerful, but yeah, they do cost meter, so I'm, you're going to be using boost a lot because you just use a lot of resources, and you lose, use your support gauge a lot as well, so using a boost is just, like, really, really, really helpful because of all these things that I do, that I do like, um like these, and then using my support to go in for stuff like this, and then going in for my pressure. <coughs> All cost me a bunch of meter, like usually three meter every time. And you go in for this, and you go in this, guaranteed grab. All of this, I've used my support, I've used a bunch of meter, and I can just go in for a boost and I can do it all again, and the opponent is practically doomed at this point. And uh, yeah. God, he's such a terrifying character, but I love him so damn much for it. And, um, yeah, I think that's basically all there is to talk about with this character. We talked about his combos. He either gets aerial combos, where if the opponent is airborne, you just get to do the awesome air attack string loops. <coughs> Sorry. 
So if the opponent's airborne for any reason when you're getting a combo, you do stuff like this. And it just does ridiculous damage. It would have done more damage if I didn't do a weird delay there. Like nearly 6,000. And if the opponent's on the ground, you can either choose to keep them grounded to go for your resets. Or you can put them into the air to go for a little bit more of a cash out. <coughs> and still get a hard knockdown to get a bunch of meter back. <clears throat> so, that is Inosuke. He's a crazy fun character with crazy fun mix-ups, which do have some answers to them, but not easy answers. And if you know what the opponent is going to do, you can definitely snuff out their tr their responses to your mix-ups and make them even more powerful. He's crazy, crazy fun. You have to dry him out. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.